Mike the Heart, Gus the Knit. It had to change sooner or later. Mike the Heart. Gus Hansen, first to act. He's under the gun. Phil Ivey, by the way, has bought in for an additional $100,000. Now as the table covered, has 221000 in front of him. And Gus Hansen with the Jokers. It's going to raise this up. Oh. Wow. Tom Dwan with two kings behind him. And when people ask, is it better to be tight or loose? I'll tell you one thing. Tom Dwan gets paid off more with kings than anybody else at this table. Yeah, that much is true. Well, <coughs> pair of jacks, pair of kings. Andrew Feldman come in here with the weak ace. No, he's out the way. 7-6 for Chris. He passes. Well, I can't believe there's two people out there with kings and we're still only seeing the flat call before the flop. Unbelievable. Well, they can't improve their hand. Gus Hansen can. He's the one that needs to at the moment. Oh, wow, and it's a dangerous flop for Gus Hansen. Now, the only curious. That... Yeah, someone could get away from this because there's an open pair board and there's likely to be so much action, this could pot could get huge. It's the only thing that might save Gus Hansen. If it was just Gus Hansen, Tom Dwan, Hansen could be in a lot of trouble. But Tom Dwan can actually win this hand with running spades. Yeah, so Alan Cunningham right now can only split the pot. He can't actually win it all to himself. And, of course, Gus Hansen can win with a jack. 5,600 a bit. And you wonder, do all three of these players actually think they have the best hand? I'm pretty sure all three of them do, at least right now. You might change if the action goes up. Well, you get a bet from Dwan, a call from Alan Cunningham. And how does Gus Hansen play this? Well, it looks like he wants to call as well. Well, is he alarmed by the player next to the player to his right? Very well respected. Is he alarmed by that call? I don't think so. I think. I still think that he might make a raise, even though he's only counted out a call bet. Well, he's moved all in here. All in. Wow. Well, now what do they do? Gus Hansen moves all in here. I just don't understand the play at all. He moves all in for what basically is $97,000. Well, it's 91500 I can't see him get he's, There's no way Tom Dwan and Alan Cunningham are both going to fold. I wouldn't have thought so. It's a very strange play. Looks like he's only going to get a call from someone who's got him beat. He's definitely not going to get a call from a nine. That much is certain. Maybe with an ace flush draw. But then how much do you like your hand anyway if he's got two over cards as well? Tom Dwan has got to think this one through, but they both have to think this one through. I tell you what, if he gets them both to fold, it'd be a miracle. Uh, there's no way both players are going to fold. When Tom Dwan calls this, though, does Alan Cunningham overcall? I think that's the problem. And that's exactly what happened. Tom Dwan does call, <laughs> Alan Cunningham folds. And this pot is now over $200,000. It's the biggest pot of the million dollar cash game. And Gus Hansen needs a jack, and only a jack. Uh, you never, you never, like you just said, I'm never going to play it like that. Well, I do want a picture card. Well, not this game. Deuce of hearts on the turn. One card. Gus Hansen with only a 5% chance of winning this pot. He needs a jack and only a jack. It was a picture card. And the and great right. Dane goes up in flames. Good, Queen of hearts on the river. Generation. And Tom Dwan wins $207,000. Gus Hansen wow. felt it right. just like Never that. Gus, obviously a late comer to the table, but quite an explosive impact when you did actually make it. Talk us through the two jacks. Uh, well, I'd rather forget the two jacks. <laughs> obviously, uh, I lost my, uh, I bought in for 100,000. I, I lost my buy-in there in, in the first round. Uh, basically, I opened in first position. This time I have two jacks. Tom Dwan calls, which doesn't mean too much. He can have a 7-6 suited. He can have an ace-5. He can have lots of things. Alan Cunningham calls in the blind. Flop comes 9-4-4 four, four with two spades. I decided to check this one. Durbed, Alan Cunningham called. And basically, uh, I'm not going to fold my two jacks on the 9-4-4 four, four board. And I decided, you know what? I don't want to see a spade on the turn. I think there's a very good chance my two jacks are ahead. So I just shipped for uh, 90,000 more. Dirt called. 
And Alan Cunningham thought for a while and showed two kings and folded. So obviously I was happy he folded two kings, but I wasn't too happy when Durr turned over the two other kings. That was a decision I made at the table. Sometimes it's right, sometimes it's wrong. Here it was obviously wrong. Uh, I was up against two guys who both slow played kings before the flop. I didn't know that and they caught me off guard.